Folks, as always, five minutes before this live stream went live, we had technical issues. I do apologise for the brief delay, but I'm here right now for you and your channel. Let's do this. VidIQ. VidIQ. VidIQ.com. Hello, everybody. Welcome to the weekly live stream here at VidIQ. My name is Rob. If this is your first time here in these glorious YouTube surroundings, we have a YouTube tool and channel that aims to help you get more views in less time by educating you on your YouTube journey. And today we are going to be auditing your channels. I have cleared the decks for you this week. We are not doing a YouTube topic. We're going to jump straight into channel audits and take any question that you care to answer over the next hour. If you are new to this live stream, there is a link in the video description that will take you to a Google form. And if you fill out that form, you may have a chance of getting your channel audited in this live stream. I'm afraid, folks, we don't have our resident YouTube expert today. So instead, I brought the eye candy in the form of Liron Segev joining us here on the live stream today. Thank you very much for taking time out of your, as always, busy schedule auditing at channels on a individual basis as always uh, later on but yeah you're looking forward to um some quick fire channel auditing for all of our audience joining today absolutely let's do it yeah so just some shout outs to kick off this live stream hello to two plus three grim Hayes, hussan bekesh i hope i've pronounced your name correctly camera lizard frank foti a to z productions az gaming comp uh, caleb tb katie calls sir Boberus, that's the best username so far in this live stream <laughs> blue tom minecraft videos john santos uh liron have you got access to the chat uh, can you do shout outs or is it just me no, this no, that's just you but, uh, but I, I, i'm hearing all the usual <laughs> good yeah. usual suspects are here so inverted popes uh all bird is here uh ben lick ifran lausen if i pronounce any of your names wrong i do apologize but that is part of the fun here on the live stream <laughs> all right then what we're going to do we're just going to jump straight into it. We're already we're just two minutes in, and I want to just audit as many channels as I can this week. Since it's Christmas, we want to give you some extra bonuses here. So I'm just pressing some buttons on screen now to enable uh, Liron to see my screen. Can you confirm you can see my screen, Liron? Aye, aye. You can, and that means you can see Liron on screen now. So, folks, what I'm going to do is dim the music. And by dim, I just mean pause it very harshly, like that. <laughs> and then press the button on our Streamlabs tool, which should take us to the first channel that we are going to review today. And it is Camera Lizard, a channel with 300 subscribers. Uh, your channel banner says you do comedy and vlogs. And I think the interesting thing when I first looked at this channel, Liron, was that it, it has this lizard in there, in the channel banner. And I'm we're trying to work out whether this was incorporated into the channel at all, or what? Do, how does a li lizard represent the channel creator? But I couldn't necessarily see that in the vlogs, which I think they, they look to be vlogs. Uh, so, is there anything here that's maybe striking you as we f look at this first this channel? And of course, congratulations to you for getting three hundred subscribers already. But what what can we see here generally from the channel? All right, so let's go up to the top so we yeah, can see the banner absolutely, again. Absolutely, yeah. Always like to start at the top, and you know, as we always say, your channel art is your business card of your channel. It's supposed to tell me the what and the why. Love that so saying, yeah. I can see the what, I can see the comedy, I can see his vlogs. I still don't know why I'm going to subscribe. Um, so Because the message, oh, camera lizard. So it's, is it to do with cameras or is it to do more with comedy and vlogs? So I've got a little bit of a disconnect yeah. there. Um, so let's go to the about section. Absolutely, yeah. Let's check what we're saying. So I'm Jack. Welcome to my vlogging world. So he says clear of it is a, a vlogger. My aim is to spread more positivity, make you smile and laugh, and to show you the world through my eyes. I travel as much as I can, although so far mostly in the UK. So I hope to you. Um, I hope you enjoy looking around with me. So what I think what I'm going to say at this point is that. I think it's good that you've got these fundamentals in here uh, with a channel banner. You fill that your description, and I think the thumbnails, to a certain extent, are are strong. I think what I would be saying to myself as a visitor to your channel is, what makes Camera Lizard uh, different to any any other vlogging channel at the moment, other than you've got a slightly unusual channel name? And maybe I'm not seeing that strongly enough in the 
uh, in the in the thumbnails uh, as. The theme seems to be um, you exploring Mar- Malaga, and then you're a not in the Christmas market, and then you're a, a comic comic con. So it's very much all about the, the person, uh, and we can see you in the, in the thumbnails. But it's is it, yeah, it's, it does feel as if there's maybe, like you say, Lear on a disconnect or something maybe missing that tells us more about what we need to find out in each of the videos. Uh, yeah, it, it, it's kind of more of. It was all about. I thought it was going to be a camera channel because that was the yeah, whole yeah, kind of camera lizard. And I thought, cool, it's going to be photography around the world, but it's not that. It seems to be very much focused on vlogging. Um, I do like the fact that he's in every single yeah. thumbnail. That's great, definitely. Yeah. Up close, I can see the eyes, as we like to say here at VidIQ. We want to see the eyes, and you're making that YouTuber face. Um, I do think that some of your pictures may look like screen grabs, perhaps. Um, yeah. You can see the one that instantly pops out. If you scroll a little bit down uh, there, up, there we go. The one that, that welcome to camera lizard. Look how that pops out because you're separated from the background. Yeah. Whereas the others, they seem to be kind of doing their job, but I'm thinking kind of oversaturate, cut yourself out, really kind of bring yourself out to, to, draw people's attention because remember a vlogging channel is about the individual so let's make this more about the individual look at that mario kart one look at the unboxing one it it really pops compared to uh, some of the others where you just happen to be in the scene now vlogging is very difficult i will tell you that Mm -hmm. yeah Um, absolutely but i will also say that you can carve out a nice niche for you but make Make your thumbnail so interesting that people are going to say, what's going on here? So the one with the glasses, number the third video that you got there, um, you know, you got your my vlog room. But don't forget, we sometimes a lot of us make that mistake where we have the text on the screen and then the text, the same text on the title. Yeah, so now boom, right there. The yeah, Very little real estate that you have about the vlogging room. And you've cut a, almost a third of that, if not more, on the left side, where I would have had maybe a couple of your things that you got on your shelf behind you, maybe kind of make it really interesting, um, like the one that you have next to it, the vlogging, uh, decorating the vlog room for, for Vlogmas. But that one, look at all these cool things that you have there, yeah. but I've got to really spend time to see it. So try and make those things a little bit pop, bring those a little bit out towards the front and make that YouTuber face, which you have, and you're doing it, well, brilliant. Let's let's bring it out there. Yeah, absolutely. I think that some superb uh, suggestions there, like the, the messaging of the channel and, yeah, absolutely, regurgitation of uh, text in thumbnails from titles is always waste of space. So, yeah, I think uh, uh, possibly this one is sort of um, the decorating Vlogmas one is kind of moving a little bit more towards it because we can see a, a couple of things mm-hmm. in the background. But, yeah, absolutely, I think... Perhaps too much emphasis on text in the thumbnails where there could be more storytelling in the thumbnail. So, Camera Lizard, I hope you found those, those, um, that advice useful. I think one more thing we, you might want to do is just maybe sort by most popular and just see which of the videos um, really struck a chord with your audience. Probably not these top ones here which should do, to do with video gaming and are a few years old, but the ones where the vlogs where you're getting into the hundreds of views rather than the, the double digits. Those are the ones which mm-hmm. seem to be working. Like, I think that's a good, exa- a good example there of a good go. thumbnail yes. here because there's something intriguing in the background. These, these coloured, I guess, um, what do we call them? Chalets uh, at Folkestone, which um, you could certainly use uh, more and and this one here where it is, you can just again see something a little intriguing in the background but maybe you could uh, blow it up use a bit of photoshop to uh, emphasize uh, that just one one th- quick thing i think it's a good tip for everyone to see you can see when rob's hovering his mouse over one of the thumbnails like the one with the chalets there you can see that the clocks appear on the right hand side yeah and therefore your text any of the text that you have there is no longer readable yeah if you have any te- text on your screen or anything important just remember those clocks. Just as an example here on the uh, Borderlands one yep. where whatever that is was covered up. And as a thumbnail gets short, smaller, the time stamp gets bigger. So absolutely another little uh, nugget of useful information there from our eye candy, Liron. Okay, let's move on to the next channel there. Uh, we're now looking at 2 plus 3. So before we go any further into this one, uh, Liron, what do you think this channel's about? Before we look at any of the about section on the videos, just from the channel banner, 
must be a vlogging, yeah. family vlogging, family channel. So I think this is a good um, point where, which um, Jeremy often speaks about is uh, visual storytelling in the channel banners. Uh, like even if this was a maybe a foreign channel and I've, I've got some foreign channels lined up where we would be able to tell what this channel's about just from the, the imagery. Uh, so I think it's good that you're including the family and, and the heroes, I like to call them, in the uh, channel banner. Uh, they're a family of five that live in Nashville. We enjoy our relaxed evenings at home. We really like to go out and enjoy the adventure. But is it? it adventure that varies out there. We enjoy camping, hiking, farming, markets. So... Uh, a, a, a traditional uh, family vlog, I would say, at this point. I'm not seeing anything that's maybe unique at this uh, this juncture. Uh, thumbnails look particularly strong, I would say, for a, a channel with 200 subscribers. A lot of effort going into these. Uh, and as Leron was saying for the previous channel, Camera Lizard, these do not look like freeze frames. These look, look like imagery that's being taken uh, at, at and built up in Photoshop or another photo editor to give it strong thumbnails. Looking at the topics, we've got some homeschooling. So, uh, yeah, it was two homeschooling videos or three. And then something about Zuppa Soup and then Box and Boxing, Surviving Road Trips. So we're a family vlog that's jumping over a lot of different topics. Oh, Leron, I'm sure I'm sure you've looked at vlogging channels before and family vlogs. Is there any particular guidance that we can offer a channel like this? Because I'm always a little hesitant to say, well, you should focus on one thing because that's not necessarily what a, a vlog is about. It's about telling stories. But here I'm, I'm trying to find out what's what's the connection between each video because we've got one here with a thousand views and then other videos with thirty six views. So there's a lot of spiking in in the view counts. Yeah, so I think vlogging um, across all genres is very, very difficult because in the olden days of YouTube, you could be a variety channel. You could mm -hmm. do lots of things on your channel and YouTube would still love you and promote your videos. Today, unfortunately, YouTube wants you to be the expert in one thing. But vloggers don't want to be the expert in one thing. They want to tell stories, and that's also cool. So the one thing I always tell my vloggers is that Make it about you and why it's you and what is unique to you. Mm -hmm. So if you got tips and tricks, those are always those always do well because other families want to understand tips and tricks. A lot of the why is very important when it comes to vlogging. Why are you homeschooling? Why are you traveling to that location? Why did you choose that vehicle, for example? Yeah. The, remember that YouTube is a search engine and we keep forgetting that. So people on YouTube who are thinking about, for example, homeschooling, will look that up. And when they see a cool channel like yours, they might say, oh, hold on, I'm here for the homeschooling. Look what else they get up to. I'm going to stick around. Let me subscribe. Yeah. Give people that reason to subscribe. Why do they want to follow your daily lives? They want to kind of connect with you. And people connect with people. So I love your thumbnails. The thumbnails are really, really good, uh, nice and strong. You're delivering your message. And you can clearly see what this channel is, is is about. So good going. Yeah, and congratulations. I just realized that that 1,000 view video was your highest view video so far. And it was done a, done a week ago. So uh, awesome stuff there. And I'm, I was just sorted by your most popular videos. And it looks as if homeschooling is one that uh, comes up continuously. So uh, I, I'm sure you already have this as one of your video series. Uh, but yeah, keep keep doing those videos because those ones seem to be the strongest so best of luck two plus three as we move into the holiday season i'm sure you'll be doing a lot of videos uh for uh, that uh period i just want to look at one more thing which was consistency and it looks as if you're posting two or three videos a week that uh consistency and scheduling might help as well especially if with a uh, vlogging channel and storytelling people like to know when they can uh come and watch another video Next channel we're looking at, our first gaming channel of the um, live stream, and it's Chris, the Irish Gamer, 4,000 subscribers. And I'm just going to leave this here, and I want, Leron, see if you can work out what this channel's about in 10 seconds. I'm going to go with Farming Simulator. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. I think that's... And, and, uh, and this is interesting because... For a lot of people, maybe farming simulators are not that interesting, but there is probably a hardcore audience who just really 
eat up this sort of content. And this channel has already built up 4,000 subscribers on what looks to be predominantly farming simulators, uh, gaming. And it, the, what thing, something that was interesting here was I look at the farming simulator videos and we have hundreds of views, like 300, uh, 180, uh, and so on. And then as soon as the video creator jumps to another topic, like Forza Horizon 4, let's do this, it gets 24 views. So... You've already locked in your audience here, I think, Chris, and you just want to probably double down on that content if that's something that you're really enjoying, you're passionate about. It certainly seems to be because you're posting a lot of videos, like at least a one a day it looks to be here. Maybe you can ref um, switch your channel banner to reflect the fact that you are the uh, Irish farming simulator king. In some way, uh, any third official, uh, official, <laughs> we, we are, uh, yeah, we are now announcing that you are officially the uh, farming king of, of Irish gaming. Sorry, so uh, just, Liron, go ahead. Yeah, so just remember at the top, go back to the top to your channel banner. Um, it says live stream, but I don't see any live streams. Yeah, yeah. The, the, we have some videos which are like an hour long. So uh, right, so we assume those are the live streams. So right? yeah, there are some. It looks to be yeah. Now, remember that your audience is here for a reason. They subscribed uh, because they want to see this kind of content. Yeah. The second you, you confuse the audience, this is where you're going to have issues. And if you think about it for yourself, if you're watching a sports channel on TV and all of a sudden they, they switch on to something political and they then you go back to your sports and before they score the final uh, touchdown, score, whatever it is, um, you know, then they switch it out to something else, you're going to get highly irritated because you were there for certain content. Your audience is here for this amazing content. Um, yeah. give, give more to them. That's what they want to see. Now, it doesn't mean you can't swap to something else, but then remember that you do run the risk of alienated some of your hardcore fans which have been with you for, it seems like, over a year now. Yeah, it, it looks as if uh, a year or two ago um, you were really dominating this farming simulator uh, topic i don't know whether that's because you decided to take a rest or maybe interest is just falling is there a new farming farm gaming simulator release that you can maybe target yeah, but, but it looks this looks pretty solid i mean the the, the one thing that I, that I will say it's as soon as i see the all the various tractors i instantly understand what's going on the car on the horizon, let's do this, is still confusing. Forza, the, the previous video before that is out of out of in tune with your channel. Chris, the Irish gamer, as a thumbnail. The farm things I need to fix this farm. Then you've gone back to farming simulation, yeah. but then your thumbnails, it doesn't, doesn't tie that up. And there's one thumbnail that isn't firing up at all. So just always go, you know, we, we forget to do what, what we do here on the channel, which is just go to videos. And simply look at this from a helicopter view, like from a top here. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Very instantly, you can see there's one thumbnail missing. One thumbnail instantly stands out because it talks about the wrong thing. And then one says Chris the, Chris the Irish um, gamer. Um, and uh, yeah, it, it just doesn't line up with the rest with the rest of your content. Um, almost as if this is what YouTube would sort of be doing. They'll be having a helicopter view of your channel and saying, "Okay, I get what this channel is about." Let's not confuse the poor algorithm. And one final thing, Chris. Uh, each of your thumbnails, uh, although we do know it's about a farming simulator game, I believe, um, each of your thumbnails is very different in its fonts and the look of it. So I think uh, upping your thumbnail game. Let's let's go dig into the world of farming simulators just to see if there are any good examples of... Um, thumbnails that you could potentially use uh, or, or, well, or use uh, something to I, base before it Before we even go down, Rob, if you go right to the top, yeah. look at that amazing search volume and look at that competition score. On yeah, that yeah there's an opportunity. there are opportunities here, absolutely. Definitely. Yeah. So, yeah, I think this is this is maybe like a good example of one where the, the tractor is really in focus and the, the text is very legible, which I think is something that... Um, you need to work on a little bit, Chris, or Irish gamer. And as uh, Liron said, right here, a good example of where the timestamp is uh, covering up, up a bit of a text. So some bits still to fix here. But I think this is a good example of a good thumbnail as well. well. Uh, whereas yours, Chris, sometimes like this one of um, building a farm is where's the focus of the thumbnail. 
Uh, I think this is a good example of a thumbnail, which um, works works better. Um, and then the one thing that we saw, if you go, um, which is very popular on gaming channels, is all those red arrows pointing at yeah, things. Yeah, yeah. Arrows That's pointing at stuff, yeah. Look there at we that. go. Lots yeah. of things pointing at other things. But it draws the eyes. It draws the attention, especially on a very busy thumbnail. Look at this. They all pretty much pretty much do that. Yeah. Uh, so maybe something you can maybe think of getting, getting into your um, thumbnail strategy. And remember, thumbnails are a strategy. Just like you have a video strategy and yeah. you've got a content ideas, thumbnail has to be part of it. It can no longer be an afterthought that you go, oh, dear, uh, let me screen grab something and put it out there. Looks like Spencer TV is the current king mm. of a uh, farming simulator. So maybe check out his channel and see how he's, what his farming, uh, sorry, not farming strategy, thumbnail strategy <laughs> is. I'm sure he's got a farming strategy within his videos, but yeah. All right, so uh, hope you found uh, that useful there, Chris the Irish Gamer. Next channel we're looking at is uh, Brolic Whiskey. Uh, Liron, I don't drink. I know you're an alcoholic, so uh, take this one away. Uh, alleged <laughs> alcoholic, <laughs> FYI. <laughs> um, Jesus, you picked the wrong person. All right, so, okay, so 2,000 subscribers. The first thing I would say is, again, going back to your channel art, Remember mobile, 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 or cell phone, cell phone, cell phone, whichever yeah. word you use. Good so point. honest, simple whiskey reviews and shenanigans that is not probably not going to fit on a cell phone device. Um, so even though that's a beautiful, clear message, you know exactly what you're going to get out of this channel. Great wording. Um, you can see it's whiskey. And you can see the barrels behind. Great picture. But remember, mobile first. So yeah. things in the middle of your screen are going to appear on the phone, so make sure that appears beautifully. Liron can't see this, but I'm just showing the, up to my webcam here. This is what it looks like on mobile, and it, you just fit in Brolic Whiskey, uh, but it is cutting out the text at the bottom a, a little bit. So just maybe you need to squeeze things in a, a shade on your yes. channel banner. Yes. And then, of course, you can see that your pictures obviously doesn't appear anymore because that gets cut out. Yeah, absolutely. And I think that's quite important. And also, in even in your icon or your – what do you call it? Is that the icon? Your channel icon? Yeah. That the channel looks, avatar. Yeah, yeah logo, avatar. Wh whatever. Whatever. So even that, I would make – these two of you seems to be in, in, this, in this channel. So I would bring both of you really close, maybe have a bottle of some sort of alcohol in your hand. Uh, some sort of whiskey, so people can instantly connect when they see people. Yeah. Um, the, as far as the thumbnails are concerned, lots of red. Cannot read most yeah. of it. Well, gen uh, generally speaking, we hate red text on thumbnails because it just unless it unless it contrasts really well with the background, it's just always almost impossible to read the, the text. Uh, when and you have unfortunately, it on it's it's skewing so much of your cool like content that you've got there. Look at that very first one that you uh, yeah. very first one. It's got you guys with with the drink, with the glass, um, you know, laughing, obviously having a good time, but I can't see any of that mm, because the text yeah. is just all over this. So um, I would definitely kind of try to work out what you, what's going on. But now I do see that you might have changed some sort of a, there's a calendar thing going on, 9 and 10. There's some sort of a series going on. Is it a different, maybe a different brand every day? It looked to be some sort of um, advent calendar thing that they were trying to do maybe just before Christmas. Uh, I think these thumbnails here are, are, are yeah. slightly better uh, than yeah. than the older ones. But yeah, I, I think just like a gaming, um, sorry, camera lizard, uh, the might, what we might need is, it looks to be freeze frames potentially uh, from thumbnails or it just needs to be better... Uh, Jeremy likes to use this word topography on the thumbnails. Uh, like I'm just looking at this one in particular, where the two um, people in the thumbnail are kind of blending into the cactuses in the background, uh, and then there's some there's some tiny text down here which I wouldn't be able to see without my magnifying glass. Um, so zoom it. So I think zoom it. And and I, another thing I've noticed here is that on every single thumbnail, the bottle, the actual reason people may be clicking on the video to watch it the review essentially you can never see it see it yeah yeah it's always a, it's always a tiny element in the, in the thumbnail so i think that needs certainly needs to be brought forward oh there is one up here which is i think that's this one he, these ones here are the, the best examples of where the the bottle is much more in focus but then you've uh, remove yourselves from the thumbnails yeah I, I think you know when it comes to reviews you know i do that on my tech channel and when it comes to reviews, I always say that the hero 
of the thumbnail needs to be the item that I'm reviewing. Mm -hmm. So if it's a yeah. phone, that needs to be up front. Um, if you guys are reviewing specific types of brandies or whiskeys, whatever it may be, it's got to be up front and making sure that people, people can actually see it. But you do have to remember that um, people on this channel are here for that reason. They want to get your your view, your flavor, your taste. How, what what do you think of it? So let them understand instantly what kind of alcohol, what kind of whiskey they're about to see. Yeah, now I've just done a quick search for whiskey review. I'm trying to find out what might be a good uh, keyword. I'm wondering whether whiskey review needs to be at the front of every single uh, title followed by the, the product that you want to actually potentially uh, review as it looks as if your strategy at, the, at this point is the, the product, the whiskey itself. Um, so yeah, I'm probably thinking maybe trying um, whiskey review or a, or you may have to do a bit of keyword research here to really find out what people are searching for in terms of uh alcoholic beverages and then obviously the, the keyword of a product is important and then some sort of i would say objective or descriptor or thought of intrigue um where it's like it has a bit of a punch to it or lacking in flavor or again i'm not a whiskey connoisseur uh so there needs to be the way, sorry the yeah way, go ahead go ahead the way I kind of look at these at, at these things, even even if it's something that I'm not interested in, you could have a very very cool title and a very very cool thumbnail that's uh, that will make me still want to click on it. So it's not so you always have to remember that you you are preaching almost to two audiences. There's your fans, 1,800. That's a lot of people. Um, you know they are the ones who are going to be coming to again and again and again. But then you're also appealing to people who might be I'm looking for a whiskey gift ideas. So maybe that could be a topic to, to get people who are not into whiskey to understand about this channel. Um, there's lots of various avenues that you can take from a starter guide to everything you needed to know to 10 tips to, um, you know, and again, play on the holiday themes. We've got um, New Year's Christmas coming up. We've got mm -hmm. New Year's yeah. coming up. Maybe start making content towards that because people might not be searching for whiskey necessarily, but they'll be searching for New Year's Eve ideas or New Year's Eve cocktails or New Year's Eve alcohol. Or, and maybe your channel will, will have an opportunity to be, to be discovered that way. Play on the trends. That's very, yeah, very important. I think this third video here is a good example of, well, like, um, whiskey gift ideas yeah. is a good yeah, example. Yeah, yes, and it yes, might be yes. like um, uh, best best whiskeys for after Christmas dinner, for example, or like anything that's getting in those um, trending and seasonal terms will, will definitely help you out there. All right, that's Brolic Whiskey, and pre-congratulations on the 2,000 subscribers you will be hitting in the new year. I'm delighted to see that you're using the community tab as well with the new access to that, so well done there. Next channel, and this is a, we're just going to take this channel, and then we're going to do some questions and answers from you in the live stream, but this is the last um, channel we're going to look at before, a, before doing that. It is Time Lag Gaming. Videos every Monday, uh, Wednesday, and Friday, so good consistency. Approaching 500 subscribers, pre-congratulations on uh, that. Uh, it's a channel um, that covers mo uh, everything Nintendo-related from the perspective of a game developer. So I think that's an interesting twist that you're adding to your uh, videos, which is brilliant, and you do say that in your... Uh, channel banner. If it's about Nintendo, could you perhaps maybe include some Nintendo imagery? I know Nintendo are very um, fussy when it comes to that, but there may be a potential there. And I just spotted one uh, video here later on, which I think sums up exactly what gaming channels should be doing when they're relatively small. This one here, 50 Switch games on sale for Black Friday. That's a, an awesome amount of research that's telling somebody everything they need to know about the Black Friday seal, sales. Uh, rather than a video, of which, uh, another video that might just be best Black Friday sales. This is a comprehensive one, and it gives me uh, much more of a reason to click. So I think that's a, and it got thirteen thousand views. So it's a, a good example yeah. of what what a smaller video creator needs to be doing to differentiate themselves from uh, every other channel, every other gaming channel there is out there. Anything else that we can spot here, uh, Liron? Looking at the thumbnails and the the channel. So the. The fact that it's a very different angle, the fact that it's not yet another gaming channel, but you're a game developer, I would make that even stronger because yeah, you're I agree. a different I agree. element 
that I'm not going to get on 200 other game kind of just game reviews reviews channel or gaming channels. So the fact that you're a developer, maybe bring that into the mix here. Kind of what I think. 10 things I think they did absolutely right. 15 things I did they did wrong. You know, um, if I was developing that game, I would have done, uh. So kind of almost bring a very unique element to this. Love the thumbnails. Sometimes a little bit too much text. Just remember that. Just be, just be wary of oversaturating your text, your thumbnail with text. Um, and using all the right keywords. Oh, the one thing um, on a gaming channel, you can get away with putting emojis in mm -hmm. your title. We don't like having emoji as the first um, character. Yeah, absolutely, yeah. Like this so one right here. Be careful of that. Um, YouTube seems to be giving preference to things at the beginning of the title as most important. So we don't want to tell YouTube that a red dot is the most important thing in that title. So don't give YouTube any reasons to dislike your video. You're going to have emojis, have them in the middle or towards the end. So just a little bonus up there for everybody else as well a couple of things to finish off from me here yeah i agree with you earlier on that the the developer aspect of this video creator needs to be more strongly emphasized because when i look at for example uh golf story unboxing and first impressions that doesn't tell me anything about what a developer perspective might be. So whatever you know, whether it's about the loading screens or uh, why you think they did this or what particularly works from a developer's perspective, I think there's that unique angle there, which you might want to stress a little more in your thumbnails and titles. And also, if you look at each of these thumbnails, if I pick these five thumbnails and then mix them up with another 20 video game channels, would I be able to pick your thumbnails out from the rest of them the answer is no because there's a, a lack of consistency i think the thumbnails relatively speaking are strong but they're all completely disconnected from each other so some consistency might help for example golf story and horizon chase there is some consistency there in the design a little bit uh, but other ones such as we need this thumbnail i don't know how that really connects to the rest of your thumbnails in terms of consistency all right, that is what we've covered five channels there so far. What we're going to do now, folks, is take some of your questions. I'm going to bring Liron back onto screen. So, folks, if you have any questions about YouTube of any kind, we want to hear them over the next five to ten minutes as we try our best to answer them. I just want to say thank you to all of the moderators who are in the chat this week. I've seen a few uh, people, a few of our moderators in in the action there, including Liron, of course. Liron of course, and uh, SP Tech Plus is also moderating for us today. Thank you very much. Uh, questions are coming in then. And the first one is, uh, when should you change a thumbnail if it's not performing? I guess if it's never performing, the, the answer would be change a thumbnail. But you want to be looking at your click-through rate on that. And um, I think yeah, you get... Just remember... Yep. Oh, I, I keep on jumping. I was just... <laughs> just remember that it's always safe to change a thumbnail. And then YouTube is not, you're not going to affect the YouTube algorithm. But when you start playing with um, titles, Correct, yep. tags, then you run the risk of YouTube re ranking your video Absolutely. and it could either do better or it could do worse. So we always say thumbnails, go ahead and change, no problem. Uh, as long as you're getting views, that's great. Um, be very cautious of changing titles. Rather, learn from the mistakes in inverted commas you did in the past and then apply them to the to future stuff. Super Rizzo Gaming 44, are custom thumbnails the key success to YouTube? I think they are one of the keys. You have to look at it from this point of view. Uh, book readers judge books by their covers. YouTube viewers judge videos by their thumbnails. So you could have the greatest content in the world. And yeah, this doesn't apply to every channel. Like you have people who've got millions of subscribers, they've already established you'll start to find that they don't work as hard on their metadata titles and whatever. But when a channel is really trying to find those marginal gains and edges, thumbnails can be super powerful and super strong. And they have to really tell a story of intrigue to get you to click on the um, on the video. Leron, I don't know if you can see the chat. If you just want to pick a question and I'll pick a question. Yeah, I saw someone asking, and I'm just trying to find that question, about should you hide, oh, there we go, from Sticky Web Domains, um, hide or show my sub count? Um, we get this question so often. We do, yeah. And my question to you is, why hide it? Um, is it usually, typically, the answer is because I've only got a, a small number of subscribers, or mm. I've got maybe a hundred subscribers. Um, you know, I don't want to. I'm not a big channel, so people might not like my stuff. Well, first of all, two things. 
Number one, if you have 100 people coming for dinner tomorrow evening, that's a lot of people. Okay, so never underestimate the number of eyes. It just needs the right eyes. So never worry about that. And number two, channels that hide their subscriber count immediately send up a red flag thinking something is suspicious. Yeah, they do. That's what people think now, don't they? It's like yeah. bef- uh, uh, you would say, I want to hide my sub count because I'm worried about what people think about the number of subs. And now it's he's hiding his sub count. He hasn't got that many yeah. subscribers. <laughs> so yeah, people, I think, have wised up to uh, that one a little bit. What else have we got there? How do you get views on a music video? A to Z Productions. Uh, I think a strong keywording is probably very helpful. Uh, Jeremy and I have been sort of suggesting, experimenting with creating um, music playlists and then running them as a live stream because that seems to be something that's super popular at the moment. Uh, but generally speaking, I think it can be hard to rank uh, for, for music content. Um, it's always a difficult one to answer that. It, it also depends, like, what's the what's the end game? If the end game is for you to sell, is it, is it your music? Are you looking to sell your own kind of um, genre? Are you looking to collaborate with other people? So if that's the game, well, maybe make a certain number of music free of charge for other YouTubers to use as long as they credit you in the description, starting to build kind of your exposure out there. Um, it, it really just depends on the end game. So it's a little bit unclear what you're trying to do with your music videos um but it's all about the that what do you want to do eyeballs or do you want to make money or are you looking to kind of grow this massive channel so that eventually you can really kind of got to focus in on the what and the why and then everything else will start to start lining up but um, keywords critical thumbnails is not so critical in this case because it's about the music uh, but i think collaboration is going to be a very very big key to get your name out there far and wide as quickly as possible yep uh it's qu- there was a question here Do- dr sten is just asking vid iq is that true Va- is it safe to change thumbnails rob and i presume that means uh, our other rob at vid summit uh, <laughs> said that it can affect uh affect google search well here's an experiment i've been doing very recently uh youtube rewind i'm sure you've all heard of that the most uh popular video on youtube ever uh because the number of likes dislikes keeps changing I have to keep changing the thumbnail uh, from 1 million dislikes to 2 million dislikes. I've been doing that over the course of half a week. And I've not noticed any significant shift in view counts. Like there's been no sudden plummet in view counts when I've done that. So um, not really aware of uh, any big shifts. I mean, you're talking about Google search. So I don't know if I, it does potentially affect search on Google search. But as far as I'm aware on YouTube, it doesn't make a, it doesn't have any impact. Got another question there, Leron? Yeah, um, from Terry... Crowder, sorry Hi, if I pronounced that wrong. Um, how to deal with haters on the comments? I don't want. Um, I don't want to delete. Should I? So there are only two types of people on YouTube um, as creators: those that have dealt with haters and those that will. There isn't a single channel that doesn't have trolls and all these low lives, as we affectionately <laughs> like to call them. Um, the question is up to you. What do you want to have your audience exposed to? I have a list of a thousand five keywords that I automatically block using yeah. YouTube manager yeah. because I don't want that nonsense on my channel. If someone is just being a douche for the sake of being it and uh, you know, then you have a choice. Do you, some people simply ignore, some people like to debate, some people like to have a back and forward. Uh, that is down, that is up to you. But as a rule of thumb, I want to make sure my audience isn't exposed to garbage. So I block all the big stuff. And there's 1,500 of them, um, stuff that I've never even heard of, but apparently they exist. Um, I make sure they don't see that. And then the rest is down to you. You can either block and report the spammer or simply just ignore and they usually tend to go away. I would not waste a single second of energy on negativity. Simply put, uh, Austin is asking where are these questions coming from? They're coming from the live stream chat. So you've just asked a question and that has answered it. Uh, hope you uh, can get uh, more value out of your next question. Uh, there was a question about end screens. Where was that? End screens, end screens. Uh, Gamers World, does changing cars or end screens interfere with the YouTube algorithm? Not that I'm aware of. Uh, not that I'm aware of. Uh, change them to your heart's content. I mean, I've certainly added cards 
to videos which link to more recent videos. So that's something that you can certainly do with cards. And never any. Well, uh, and that's a great. That's by the way, it's, it, you just kind of simply glanced over that, but um, that's a great strategy. If you have old videos yeah. that are performing well, and oh yeah, absolutely. Used, absolutely go use those end cards and end screens and update them to point them to your, some of your new stuff, some of the stuff that's more related. If I did a video two years ago about, I don't know, the Galaxy Note 7, and it's doing still well, I might want to link them to the 10 tips about the Galaxy Note yeah. 9 now because that's fresh. So Rob's little, ah, just simply change your end card is actually quite a deep strategy that we deploy quite often. So use your channel to your advantage. Point people where you want them to go. All right, Leron, I'll see your uh, extrapolation of my glancing over and go full throttle on this. So you can use end screens, you can use interactive cards, uh, you can use uh, the video description, you can even create a comment and pin that to your popular videos to direct them to more of your content. Boom. Good hack, good uh, hack, good yeah, hack. Well, right. Then a comment to the top with a link. Beautiful. What else have we got here? Any other awesome questions? We're just looking through the chat here, folks. What is the most efficient way to make giveaway events uh, than growing your channel? I, I guess that's how to grow your channel with giveaways. The simple answer with giveaways is I think they're fantastic to give something back to your audience. However, as a growth strategy, that's probably not going to be too successful because when you're giving away something for free, people will come for the free stuff and then leave when there's nothing else for free to give away. So don't... And, yep. and, and, and it gets progressively worse because mm. what happens with giveaways is not only does it... You know, typically, the typical giveaway is subscribe to my channel that gives you one entry into the giveaway, right? So... People kind of do that. They subscribe. You you think your subscriber count has shot up, which it has. So now you're starting to – so you you feel warm and fuzzy because you've got more numbers. However, when you're looking at your analytics now and you're trying to create content going forward and you're trying to think what is my audience actually wants, all those kind of people who were there just for the giveaway are actually of no value to you and are causing your analytics to skew to the wrong thing. So you could be creating an entire strategy – or around those people who are not actually your loyal fans. They were there for the one giveaway, and now your entire strategy is going off track because you're trying to cater for them. Be very strategic with your giveaway. They do work, uh, and they do add lots of value to your audience. Just be careful with that as a growth strategy, as Rob says. And we'll take one more question, which is uh, Naya uh, Macho, who's desperate to ask this question. Should we ask, add one-word tags, full-sentence tags, or a few-word tags? We have a video all about keyword research. It's 20 minutes long. Uh, do check it out. To, to answer simply, as a smaller channel, you want to be trying to find those golden nugget keywords. So we're talking about long tail keywords, phrases of four to five words, which answer exactly what something, uh, a question that somebody is looking for. Uh, that might be uh, like how to install SSD on Windows 10, for example, or how to get the new shotgun on Fortnite Season 7. So really specific stuff whatever it is longer tail keywords which are just like gaming or youtube very broad they're just not going to help your channel uh, especially as a smaller channel so yeah stick to longer tail very specific very relevant keywords all right Leron, i know you have a limited time we've got about 15 minutes left so if you're good uh shall we just jump into some more la um channel let's audits? yeah let's get Bring straight it into it yeah okay i just gotta press some Buttons here, folks, for everybody, so I can share my screen. Uh, Leron, can you see my screen again? Aye, aye. Right, let's move on to the next channel, which is uh, Florian Sava. Now, the reason I've chosen this channel is it is a, a foreign language channel, and for some reason I cannot translate this. So I thought it would be a good uh, experiment for us to try and, uh, try and um, ascertain what this channel is about purely through the visual elements of the channel and then where maybe they can improve on those areas. So it looks to be, to me, some sort of travel vlog, possibly in French. Am I right there? 
I could be uh, completely Italian, I'm Itali- sorry, Italian. Yeah, I'm getting distracted by the uh, what I thought were French colours up here. Um, but I'm not entirely sure what the focus of the channel is because we've got some videos which look to be about editing on Adobe Premiere. We've got videos here which look to be about surfing. Another one looks to be about uh, cold weather, perhaps. So I think there's definitely some vlogging elements in here. But then I don't know if it's not tied up on the channel banner. Mm. So, Leron, I know this this is going to be quite difficult. I've kind of done this on purpose to because Thanks. I, I think another I think another thing is that when viewers look at a channel, they want to try and work out what it's about in five to ten seconds. They don't want to have to do the hard work, and we're right. making it hard on purpose with the language barrier. So, yeah, visually, how can this channel better tell us what it's about? So I think two things. So firstly, you hit on a, uh, another great point. You, you should actually do this every week, by the I way. I should do, yeah. <laughs> yeah should do. Um, the whole thing is that because we don't understand it, what are we relying on is mm. the thumbnail. That is the clue. And it's a very good exercise to do even on your own channels because then you can kind of get a helicopter view to say, is my channel clear? Uh, is somebody seeing just these pictures and literally scrolling down that quickly? Can they instantly get an understanding of what's going on? Um, I think with this particular channel, it definitely looks like some sort of vlogging because the topic seems to be so varied. Yeah. I mean, from, yeah. from the beach on the one side to snow on the other, um, to premiere some sort of 9959, I don't know what that is, um, to a backpack. But the ones that do jump out are the ones which are less text, very clear. Mm. Because he's having a good time on the beach with a hat on, put a thumbs up. It tells you the story. I'm not sure what that wave is. Is that wave supposed to be there? It's yeah. just taking up space, and it looks how odd it kind of it, it jumps out at me. Even the Italian, uh, the whole Italy thing um, with the boot, it's so big and so overbearing that it's taking focus away from him. It's taking focus away from that cool scenery he's showing us. So I don't know. I think this. I'm assuming it has to be some sort of a vlogging yeah. thing, which is cool. And by the way, different languages do um, insanely well, so you don't have to worry about needing to only be English speaking. That's yeah. absolutely not true. Um, but you do have to visually storytell so clear that anybody can see this and go, oh, cool. I know what this is about. So we might have hit it on the head where it's a vlogging channel. I'm just not sure. Yeah, just I uh, just wanted to sort by the most popular videos. They tend to be a few years ago, so maybe nothing we can really gauge from there. I would say that from the channel size, which is just under 500 subscribers, you're getting view counts of around about 10 to 20 percent of those viewers so there, there is there is an audience there but yeah um some, some excellent points there from Leron. next channel and we're i think we're moving into the, the gaming uh, theme now we're going to be looking at a lot of gaming channels now unbeaten plays channel with just over 100 subscribers congratulations on hitting 100 subscribers uh we've got uh what's it rocket league pixel gun um, and then how to make a professional website with Wix. So I think we're going to be we're going to be we're going to be jumping through a lot of um, uh, videos uh, channels here, probably saying very similar things. What's the channel focus? I can't really work out what that is. Yeah, and if you can't work out what it is, and you're smarter than YouTube algorithm is, so therefore YouTube algorithm isn't going to be able to do it either. So when you have a gaming channel and you have so many different topics, and you between them. Uh, it, it's just so so difficult. Could you do still? Could you still do well? Absolutely. It's just going to take you a hell of a lot longer yeah. to get to those level. If you start focusing on some direction and say, "I'm only going to do this for a while," it doesn't have to be forever, but just to give you some sort of a um, traction. So, Sky, uh, what's it called? Rocket League. Rocket League. Yeah, I noticed that. Um, it, was, it was like four Networks Rocket well. League. Yeah, four right. Rocket League videos here, which tend to be the best performing ones, at least in this small sample size. Okay, so just yeah. be careful on jumping around too much. And, and understand we all experiment and we're all trying to understand what works and what doesn't. Uh, YouTube likes you to be specific. Um, once again, channel art, it's all about tell me what I'm going to get on this channel so that I know this is the best Rocket League channel on the planet. Here's why. Mm-hmm. Oh, geez. Okay, who can make that claim? Let me go through it. Next channel, uh, Sebastian's PTM. This is another foreign channel. Uh, and again, I just wanted to look at this one again and say, can we work out what this channel is about? Uh, I guess that the short answer is not too no. well because 
uh, it, the very text heavy, the um, the thumbnails. But I do have a translate button on this one, so this is going to be interesting. So, folks, just before we jump into uh, what we what the channel is about, if you just want to post in the comments what you think about the the thumbnails, that's what we're going to look at here, and then I'm going to translate it, and then we can actually work out what it's about. So. Uh, any general thoughts here on the thumbnails, uh, Liron, from yourself? Well, love them. Yep. It's very facial, strong. It's, it's making expression. It's got a cool background, lots of bright colors, big text, easily readable, thumbs up, nicely done. Um, you can see the ones, the video number four. Um, you can see the difference with the little espresso thing at the bottom, the little hashtag espresso you can see how that is some just doesn't look like it fits. Yeah. Where all the others, yeah, there we go. Yeah. But you can see all the other stuff is so beautiful, nice and pop, beautiful colors, um, really, really cool stuff. Just be careful. Um, one thing I would say in one which is number seven, um, just be careful of not having the exact same text in your thumbnails text as you have in your title. Yeah. Even we can even we can spot that in a foreign language. All right, we got we got some suggestions coming in. Is it about agile agile project management? Another one saying it's a cooking channel. Uh, uh, it's somebody saying about maybe about animations or a photography channel. I'm going to press the translate button and hopefully we'll be able to find out right now. It is a channel about uh, backlog refinement. Uh, so it looks as if it's something to do with work and employment, uh, trusting employees. Oh, go to the about section. Let's see yeah. that. Yeah. Okay. So we'll go to the about section and translate that. Uh, about empowerment go. and working with people here on this channel so you can motivate people. So it's about inspiration and working in a more positive environment, I guess. So. Yeah, how could how could you visually translate some of that in the thumbnails? I think would be the question there for mm -hmm. for you, uh, if that's possible, Sebastian's. But um, congratulations, you now have a seventy one thousand. Uh, so I don't know how that happens, but yeah, <laughs> seven hundred and seventeen thousand one hundred seventy one subscribers, all done with a click of a button. <laughs> with a translate button gaming knipsy uh all right i'm gonna be very quick on this one your last six videos just cause three hitman the sims viscera if that's a game and then hitman uh and then black ops 4 what is your channel focus uh would be the big question now i think looking at your about section it was saying that you do funny montage videos uh for games which i think is F a fine approach but maybe you want to uh, uh, put a series of montage videos together rather than jumping from one video to the next to the next or focusing on videos uh, games that have just been released for example i know just cause 4 was released this week so you may want to do montage videos on that if you have it uh, anything else uh, leron before well, before I moving I on i would say of the, of the mon funny montage yeah because nobody's doing that, but there's nothing on your thumbnails to even suggest that. So yeah, good point. All, all the channel emoji. branding, yeah. Right, so like cool laughing emojis, for example, will instantly tell me that those are the fun, those are your montage moments. Yeah. And I'm not, not to take that one too seriously as gameplay. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, good point. You've got, to get, you've got to think of the new user who doesn't know you. What are they seeing? They, they think they're seeing this, but in fact, it's a montage. They're going to be confused. So let's not confuse our people. But some of this is quite serious stuff. Like, like oh, funny moments and fails. Um, theme park simulator. Funny best moments. I, and I think, uh, much like with um, montage clips, you need to find a thumbnail which has a epic moment on it whether it's the head being sliced off or yes. like a like a, somebody with 17 arms because there's a glitch in the game these thumbnails don't do a good job of selling the the glitches or the funny moments so again we've been talking about this throughout this live stream but thumbnails are so important Leron, do you have five minutes left is that correct literally four four minutes left all right let's try and get through as many more channels as we can the how of this channel i know it says 14 000 subscribers and i i was looking at uh, why the channel had 14 000 subscribers and it's because they have some viral videos from a few years ago one video that has four and a half million views which is fantastic but you haven't been able to carry that on with your recent content 
Um, I guess because I think you um, made an appearance on television, which probably helps as well. But kudos to you for keeping on with the um, family vlogging. Anything that we could quickly suggest here other than to do more Baby Shark videos, which seems to be doing uh, popular for the channel? Uh, yeah, just remember, play on the holidays, play on the most searched terms, yeah. play on themes, because that's how you get family vlogging channels to rank. If you can play on a theme, Christmas, New Year's, Valentine's, all of those, play yeah. on those a lot. Good good thumbnails here, by the way, on, yeah. um, on your content. And yeah, maybe just go through like your last six months worth of videos because those are what reflects your channel status at the moment and see which if there's any uh, themes or topics which are really popular within that uh, within those videos maybe double down on them if you possibly can uh you do use a community tab which is awesome next channel techno reason looks to be a gaming channel which again seems to be flipping from topic to topic you have a discord channel you're playing fortnite you play minecraft a hat in time uh and it looks to be some consistency issues here as well so you posted a video three videos in the last week and then a gap of a month and then a, another gap i guess are you making this content when you're perhaps on school holidays consistency is going to be super important there Anything, anything else there, Leron, that you can yeah. immediately spot? Channel, channel banner, channel art. Yeah. Very important. Tell me about this channel because I thought this was maybe an art thing. Absolutely, uh, yeah. It doesn't tell me that Good it's point. a gaming. Yeah. So, remember, so, first impressions count, guys. So, some fundamentals there for your channel. Uh, join Matt's army. Uh, I assume it's about Star Wars, given the uh, Stormtroopers at the top and the uh, relatively... Uh, so they look to be like just freeze frames, but then there's some stuff about a gameplay. Yeah, I think simply, John, what's your channel about? Is it about Star Wars? It looks to be, or is it about video gaming? Is it a game? It looks like it's a game. Uh, there's some stuff about, oh, I think there's, there's some gameplay. Clone Wars there maybe as well, but you're repeating the thumbnails, which is always a very bad idea. Never use the same thumbnail, thumbnail twice. Um, but... Yeah, yeah, I, I yeah, mean, we, we, I, we, it's, we about, it's about Star Wars, but I'm not seeing Star Wars in any of the titles here that I can see. Yeah, and, and that's that's what I was going to say, is yeah. that the, the overall theme is, seems to be Star Wars, but you're not mentioning it anywhere. But also, we just spent a couple of minutes scrolling through it, trying to work it out. A couple of moments on YouTube life is too low. So let's <laughs> yeah. make it a little Good bit point. clearer to kind of the audience saying, hey, this is Star Wars gameplay related merchandise, whatever it may be. But let's make it clear so I know what, I'm, what we're getting. Yeah, boy, Sam. That's a fun channel name to say. Uh, coming up to 6,000 subscribers. Uh, now, this is a good example of a channel that knows exactly what it's about. And it is NBA 2K19. And it looks to be like a, a live stream playthrough of it. Because look at all of these videos. Every single one is about that same topic. I guess the one thing to say is that a couple of months ago, you were getting views in the tens of thousands, which is awesome. And now you're getting views into the hundreds or just over a thousand. And I think this is a, uh, an example of if you put all of your eggs, eggs into one basket, uh, it could have consequences in the long run because I guess the the basketball game was released a couple of months ago and now interest and search is starting to wane on that. You may have to switch up your content. Maybe you need to do tips and tricks or shorter videos or something that's going to bring your audience back in uh, to the content. Anything else there? Uh, uh, yeah, just um, thumb, also on the thumbnails, um, if I, you've got the same thumbnail seems to be repeating yeah, again. Yeah, that is again, true again. as well, yeah. I do understand it's my career and, it's, and I'm assuming that's the kind of your paycheck because you've done well. Mm. Uh, but maybe find a different way to incorporate that thumbnails because once I see it three or four, five, six times, it doesn't really pull me to motivate me to say, I've got to watch this next one hour, 23 minute video. Yeah, viewer so, fatigue, I think as well. Like all of these live yeah. streams of like three or four hours, how a lot, how much, how often can you do that with the same audience? Uh, so maybe some, I think stick to the topic and the focus, but some maybe a new strategy in video content if you're finding that your audience is uh, tipping off. Have you got any more time, Leron, or are you all out? Uh, unfortunately, I have a, 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 my next big <laughs> channel audit is happening now, so I'm going to have to love and leave you guys. Yeah. Uh, I might join back if you're still live. Um, 
we'll probably see you shortly. Yeah, thank you. So thank you very much, uh, Liron. Uh, he has to now go and do his actual day job, which is to audit uh, individual channels here at vidIQ. And I've just got a couple more channels that I want us to look through here. Uh, Edgy Machine, you are approaching a thousand subscribers, so congratulations on that. Thanks for a lot, Liron. By the way, uh, and I'll speak to you soon. Uh, so what have we got here? Uh, we all, you look to be a CSGO channel. Some awesome thumbnails here. Lots of work put into the uh, graphical elements of your thumbnails, which is really good. Fonts maybe could use a little bit of work. For example, this one, Knives and Gloves. The font blends too much into the background. Um, but other ones here, which are really super impactful. And I like the fact of the consistency of the fonts. And you're getting just over a 1,000 views on some of these, which is really good to see. I guess just look at the videos which really drop off in views, like the one which is CSGO and new Panorama update. Those ones did not perform well for your channel, but these recent um, uh, CSGO ones are really performing well. So I'd say double down, produce as much content as you can on these. Uh, like you're producing maybe two or three videos a month. Can you maybe produce 10 videos in the next two weeks to really nail down on that topic? Congratulations in advance on a thousand subscribers. Uh, now, Modern Rogue, I was I couldn't really work out what this channel was about. It seems to be Russian translations of a what, another channel or a group of people who I'm not familiar with, I must admit. So I'm not sure where the advice I can give to you here. Is it copyright content? Um, let's see on the About section... Yeah, I can't, I, I'm sorry about that. I just can't really ascertain what the channel's about other than... I know that every single video is in English and it's been translated into Russian. Uh, if you're the official uh, translator of this channel, awesome. I think you're doing a good job and it's always going to take a while to build up a channel which is translated from another one, just as we're doing with vidIQ Espanol at the moment. But things generally seem to be good here with your thumbnails and whatnot. I think just maybe focus on the uh, what are going to be the really important Russian keywords for your channel and as we've all over channels recently, congratulations on 444 million subscribers, uh, which we managed to do for you in the last two or three seconds. And that is it for this week of audits. I did have to uh, make this one a little shorter because I am actually traveling. I'm getting on a plane in a couple of hours, so I need to prepare for that. But it has been an honor as always. If you want to say your goodbyes in the next couple of minutes, I will be more than happy to shout them out. As always, I do apologize that we didn't have a chance to audit every single channel this week. I try and choose new channels every single week and I purge the audit list every single week so that I know that people who are filling out that form are going to be on the live stream as we are going out live. So thank you very much to uh, Mitsurista. I do apologize if I pronounce your name wrong there. Super Rizzo Gaming, Critical Gamer N, 2 plus 3. Uh, thank you very much for allowing your channel to be audited. Made of Cake, Science Games, uh, Ginger Cow, uh, who else have we got? MS Moam, ICU Nurse, John Santos, uh, We're at Voices. Uh, I will try and get to your channel uh, and maybe perhaps next week. Uh, Peddling with Paul, take care on the safe flight. Thank you very much. And uh, uh, yeah, stupid video. <laughs> You're not, you don't have stupid videos, but uh, interesting username there. Gaming Knipsy, uh, goodbye to you. Thank you, everybody, for joining this weekly live stream. If you enjoyed it, don't forget to give it a thumbs up. Subscribe, if you haven't already, to ensure that you uh, see this live stream every single week. And, of course, as always, enjoy the rest of your video-making day. And fingers crossed I will see you next week. I'm traveling, so it may be a little difficult, but I'm going to try and get that organized for you. Goodbye. Thanks for watching.